Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The Hatfields and the McCoys. Invariably, you've all heard of the Hatfields and the McCoys. I've certainly heard of the Hatfields and the McCoys and other, you know, feuding, warring parties uh, with a long uh, and, and heavy tradition. But how many of you know, how many of you know what the Hatfields and the McCoys are all about? How many of you know that whatever the Hatfields and the McCoys were feuding over went all the way to the Supreme Court? Huh? How many of you knew that? Well, you're about to learn everything um, that there is to know about the, uh, the feud. The Hatfields and the McCoys, The True Story. That's the name of a great new book by Dean King. And Dean joins us right now. Hey, Dean, how are you, sir? Hi, Steve. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Okay, so I, I have to admit, before seeing your book, I, too, was, uh, you know, an interested observer from afar. Uh, certainly the Hatfields and the McCoys were, you know, like oil and, and water or whatever. You know, you, you, you take the two, and you know, they don't mix, and you know they were feuding. But I got to tell you, I didn't have any idea, especially after knowing what I know now, uh, of what that was all about. So first tell us, what got you interested in, in focusing on this, this, uh, this, you know, war between the two? Well, you know, I have family roots in West Virginia, and I write uh, nonfiction adventure books. I've been to Africa. I've been to China for my last two books. And I thought, you know, I want to do something closer to home. And, um, and this was just a great story that um, had been um, sort of laying fallow for a while. And I started digging into it and, and found that, you know, while we did know all those stereotypes and we knew the legend, we re nobody really knew – um, what happened in the feud anymore. Uh, and, and it turns out that um, uh, the, the Hatfields and McCoys recently came together, well, after 9-11, they came together and signed a peace treaty. Uh, and, and I started thinking about that. I, I think you know, there, there's a reason why there's this renewed interest, I think, in this feud um, from, from the 1880s. And I think it's because this is a real American root story. And, you, you, you know, the first thing you think of, of course, is all the anger and violence and the stereotypes of the hillbilly stereotypes. But underneath what you had was two pioneering families. You had uh, one of English roots, one of Scots Irish roots. They were self-reliant, you know, freedom-loving, liberty-loving people. And, um, and so beneath the violence, the unfortunate violence that occurred, was, I think is, is a real story that tells us something about being Americans. Well, take us from the start. Take us so that that, that explains your interest and in, in why you got involved and what you found and what 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 uh, what grabbed you. But take us to the to the roots of this and who these people were and and how it all started and how it got to be so uh, you know how they got to be so infamous. Well, so, so these guys sort of naturally migrated to you know re remote parts of America, trying to make their way. Uh, they ended up in the wilderness of West Virginia and Kentucky, right on the Tug Fork, which uh, the river that separate, separates the two states. Uh, and um, they actually, in early years before the Civil War, were very friendly and had intermarried and worked together and did business together. Um, but during the Civil War, the, uh, the, the Tug Fork um, divided um, Kentucky and what was then Western Virginia and became West Virginia. And uh, the people along that border became really bitter enemies. And uh, this happened uh, n not as you might think exactly. You know, McCoy's on one side and Hatfield's on the others. Both families were on both sides. But if you were on the West Virginia side, you were a Confederate. Um, you pulled for the Confederacy even after West Virginia went Union. And if you were on the Kentucky side, they were neutral at the beginning of the war, but they went Union, and so those guys fought for the Union. But So the, the families were split down the middle, but there was a faction of Hatfields in Virginia, West Virginia, um, who were Southern, and there was uh, uh, most of the McCoys in Kentucky were Union. And, and in fact, the one that they would feud with the most, Randall McCoy, fought for the Confederacy. So um, you, had, uh, you, you had a war that really um, brought a lot of violence uh, to the area, but left somewhat of a mixed message among these families. Uh, but in the war, the Hatfields killed a McCoy, uh, a guy named Harmon McCoy. Who and was when you Randall say, Dean, when you say in the war, you mean in the, in the Civil War? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Uh, at the end of the Civil War, yeah. 
um, the, the Hatfields killed a, um, Harmon McCoy, who was Randall McCoy's brother. And um, some people will tell you that's the beginning of the feud. Some people will tell you it wasn't because he fought for the Union and Devil Lance, the main Hatfield, uh, and uh, Randall, the main McCoy, fought for the Confederacy. They say, well, Randall didn't avenge this death, so it didn't start the feud. But this feud is much more complex than you, you might think. And what happens is typical in a feud is that a father will be killed and his children were, will come of of age later, his sons. Looking to avenge it, yeah. To, yeah, to avenge the death. And that, in fact, is what happened with Harmon McCoy's sons. But in the meantime, the main part of the, of the feud was with Randall McCoy. Uh, there was an argument over some Razorback hogs in the um, 1870s. And then there was a, a, a romance between the son of, uh, of uh, Devil Ants Hatfield and the daughter of Randall McCoy that went awry. Um, they ran off. She got pregnant, um, ended up uh, going back to her family, and Devil Ants' son then married her cousin. And so that created some wow. <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, having four daughters, I know what kind of anger that could create. I can imagine. We're talking to Dean King, author of The Feud, The Hatfields and the McCoys, The True Story. Okay, so uh, go ahead. Keep t how does this progress? And, and, and also let us in on you know, just how widespread, how many people involved in, in, in this feud, and how long did it go on? Well, the, the feud, you know, if you date it from the Civil War, which I do, um, it went from 1864 until um, the early 1890s. 1890, um, one of, in, in 1890, one of the Hatfields was, was hanged in Pikeville, and that's considered by many to be the end of the feud, but, but others were still hunted down after that by bounty hunters. So if you go back, you, you had this, um, you had the Civil War killing, you had the romance gone awry in 1880, and then in 1882, um, and, and these things often happened on election days because the, these people were living up in the hollers um, in West Virginia and Kentucky, and they would come down on election days uh, wearing their finery. That's when courting went on. That's when a lot of business deals were done. They would bring baked goods, and they would bring moonshine, of course, and uh, so you had sort of uh, the full panoply of humanity going on on these election days. You had that romance, and on, in 1882, there was actually a fight between Devil Ants' brother, Ellison Hatfield, and three of Randall McCoy's sons. Why was uh, he Elephant Hatfield? Um, that was a nickname, I guess? Uh, um, elephant? No, it was Ellis, Ellison Hatfield. Oh, Elephant. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, and they ended up uh, stabbing Ellison 27 times wow. and they shot him. Wow. He actually hung on for another 48 hours. He didn't die. They took him back into West Virginia because they were all in Kentucky for this election day. Uh, and the three McCoy brothers were arrested by Kentucky Hatfields. They were going to take them to Pikeville to put them in jail and, and have them tried there. But one of uh, Devil Ants' brothers, Wall Hatfield, came across and stopped them and said, no, we want to keep them here. We want them to be tried here. Devil Ants then came over with a posse, uh, grabbed these uh, three brothers, and took them into West Virginia. They kept them in a schoolhouse while his brother was um, lay um, dying of these wounds. Uh, and when he did, in fact, die, Ellis Ellison died after about two days. Um, they had a very um, perfunctory trial of the three brothers. They then took them back into Kentucky, and they executed them. They, they shot them uh, at a pawpaw patch. And then, then these Hatfields went back to West Virginia. So they created a, a legal conundrum. You know, they had committed this murder in Kentucky, but they lived in West Virginia. Indictments were handed down in Kentucky for these Hatfields, but no, no sheriff was going to cross that river and go into the, uh, the Hatfields hollers and pull them out. They wouldn't come out alive. This is amazing stuff. It really is. What, what, how did the, what, 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 where was the Supreme Court involved? So, um, so you, you had a time when these indictments had been handed down, but, but nothing happened for a few years because they were at a stalemate. And finally, um, a McCoy in Pikeville started raising the pressure on the Hatfields. He had been able to deliver the county for the new governor of Kentucky, and in return he said, hey, I want you to put higher prices on the heads of those Hatfields so bounty hunters will go in there and hunt them down. 
And when the Hatfields realized this was happening, they decided in 1888 that they would try to kill Randall McCoy. They thought if they could, you know, basically kill off the McCoy family, then then it would be forgotten because right. the McCoy family wouldn't be there to, you know, pressure anybody. Right. So so they went over there and they burned uh, Randall McCoy's cabin. They didn't kill Randall. He got away, but they killed one of his sons and a daughter. And this was a watershed moment in the feud. You just didn't kill an innocent woman. And um, and it it then became national news. Uh, Public sentiment went against the Hatfields. And uh, a a McCoy-led posse came into Kentucky, I mean, came into West Virginia from Kentucky, uh, hunted down and, and captured eight Hatfields, murdered another Hatfield, and instigated something called the Battle of Grapevine Creek. And this created a lot of tension, as you might imagine, between the governor of West Virginia and the governor of Kentucky. They started arguing back and forth, and they went into the court system. Uh, The governor of West Virginia was demanding the return of these um, Hatfields who had been illegally arrested, and he claimed kidnapped. And so that, that did go through the court system and went to the Supreme Court of the United States. And who won there? Kentucky won. Um, the court ruled that it didn't matter how these pe- fugitives were brought to court. The court could still try them. And it really um, it created an open season because the governor of West Virginia put prices on the head of the, of the Kentucky posse that came into West Virginia. And the governor of Kentucky had prices on the heads of the Hatfields. And so now bounty hunters poured into the area to, to hunt these guys down. Uh, and that was in, in 1888 and, and uh, up through 1890. You also had the press coming down from New York City. Three different um, big reporters came down and, and wrote major stories about the feud. It was also the time of the Jack the Ripper murders going on in London. So the headlines nationally and internationally were Jack the Ripper and the Hatfield-McCoy feud. Oh, man. Now, what was your what was your favorite part about writing this book? I mean, what was what did you find out about the feud and the families that maybe you had no idea you'd ever hear. Well, you know, what was the know, most shocking, I guess, I'm looking for? <laughs> I spent four years researching this, and the first time I went in, I, I actually didn't know any Hatfields, McCoys, and I got shot at. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got. Uh, I, I had a couple private forestry rangers take me into the place where one of the McCoys was murdered. And um, somebody didn't want us there, and, and they, they opened up, and they, they, they could have hit us if they wanted to. They shot into the water. You about needed protection, huh? You it. needed protection. <laughs> well, the next time I went back, I, I told a guy I'd met there, an innkeeper, I said, hey, I need to meet some Hatfields. So he introduced me to some Hatfields. And, you know, over time I became great friends with them. They would take me up on the ridges and show me where the Hatfield family hid out back in the day. And take, they took me to all the sites, and they introduced me to other family who had diaries and, and things like that. So um, I, I did a lot of, of deep digging. Uh, among, among the things that, um, that I wrote about that hadn't been written about before were uh, a guy named Dan Cunningham, who uh, was a U.S. Deputy Marshal. And he was, you know, there, there, were, there was no state police back in that day. Um, but uh, there, there were private detectives, there were deputy marshals, and he was one of the main guys who came in and hunted down McCoys and Hatfields. He's been largely left out of the story. You won't see him mentioned at all in the um, History Channel's miniseries, right. uh, mainly because the histories have been written by Hatfields and McCoys. Um, not always, but, um, but, but largely, and they're more interested in their families. They weren't so interested in... in right, so people, as an outsider, you know, Dean, in. you were able to, to take a step back. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think both families have appreciated that. You know, I, I just came from two weeks of, of touring, and, and I went to McCoy family reunions, I went to Hatfield family reunions, and I went to joint Hatfield and McCoy family reunions. Wow. <laughs> so That must have been good. That must have been great. Well, listen, this is really, this has been fascinating. And uh, I urge people, if they want to hear more and read more, certainly, and be uh, entertained at the same time, I pick up Dean King, uh, the book The Feud, The Hatfields and the McCoys.